assalamu alaikum if i say so that this year was one of the most remarkable and changing years of my life i would not be wrong and maybe it is the case with all of you who have witnessed uh, some historical events happening around the world especially in muslim countries and in north african muslim countries um and it all started from tunisia but the what if i was if i say the the main event that changed the perception of people and that changed the way journalists work and that changed the way how the future of journalism and television is going to be was i think egypt and um, i happen to be one of those people who were there to witness this account first hand and i'm going to share a little bit about that with you uh, today i reached cairo uh, the capital of egypt on 28th of uh, january and that was a friday there were few people on the streets mostly uh, tahrir square was full but it was not uh, the crowd you i witnessed the night before on televisions around the world via al jazeera or other channels and uh, i witnessed there was um, a huge sense of calmness maybe the calm before the storm is was going to come uh, my hotel room was just next to the nile river near the bridge which oversaw a, a battle between protesters and um, the right police the bridge was completely taken over by right police they had barricades at four or five different places on the um, on the bridge and the protesters were starting to gather in front of the at the opening of the bridge Uh, initially there were few hundreds and then the crowd became quite big at uh, right um, before the uh, friday prayer and when the prayer started i eventually went down and i said my prayer with the protesters on the street eventually the the small clashes started to uh, take place between the police and uh, the the protesters and it was uh, the beginning of uh, um maybe a change in the game Uh, by uh, the protesters because uh, that day they they pushed the police back on that bridge and the, after that uh, within a uh, few hours the right police completely disappeared from the streets of cairo and you could not see uh, any one of them for some time it was seen that there no one is controlling there was no police or there were like few of the policemen who were there and after um, one day we saw the military coming on to the streets and that changed the way things were happening but uh, the the nile bridge battle um, i think that was kasr nil bridge uh, if i'm remembering the name rightly i have written about it in my in my blog um, that oversaw the changing of uh, the perception of people because before that it was impossible for any egyptian to stand against the right police not just the ordinary police the right police and uh, tell them to back off and that day they did it uh, i tried to avoid the main tahrir square because that was uh, strongly covered or uh, if i say so that was covered in detail by main channels like al jazeera and other newspaper correspondents who were there in the square talking to people i tried to go out of the square talking with people who were coming to square who were going from the square people who had uh, casualties people who had uh, lost someone in the cra- in, in the in the fightings and all that stuff and i think that's why i was taken seriously and that's why a lot of newspapers around the world um uh, decided to uh, listen to my story rather than the story happening in the square because whatever was happening in the square was shown on the television the stories behind that square was the, were the real stories that basically majority of the newspapers missed or the television channels missed in those days and i think that was one of the dilemma of the the uprising because they, that was portrayed as a very heroic and a very um bold uh, uh revolution uh, sort of thing and i think the use the use of the word revolution was quite uh, uh difficult for me i did not use that word for for long when i saw the uh, real face of people uh, who were orchestrating that um uprising from behind maybe if i say so i don't know i i might be sound weird right now saying so but eventually what i'm saying is getting clear and hopefully by the end of the elections results and if there is a government you will realize what i'm saying um 
one of the most uh, um, piercing or strong impression I had was that the people uh, who were there most of the people were there for their genuine reasons because they wanted to express the anger the frustration they had kept for decades and I think that was what draw that drove the protests uh, in the beginning but there was a, an organization uh, in that there were field hospitals and um, people who were helping themselves there were soup kitchens and all these things which pointed me or which intrigued me if I say so and after pushing around and finding and maybe asking some piercing questions to some people I realized that that force was Muslim Brotherhood I did mention that in tweets but uh, a lot of people rejected my my perception or my point of view and uh, I think one of my main articles in on my blog because no one uh, decided to publish that article I said Islamists on the rise um, and if I, I see that now uh, that is what is happening. Islamic, Islamist parties are gaining momentum in Tunisia. They, they, they had a, a massive electro, uh, electoral victory. That is exactly happening in uh, Egypt now with Muslim Brotherhood. But away from that, I think people who were driving that, uh, the main issue in their mind, if I, if I pinpoint, that was identity. A lot of people, a lot of youth who said that they want to be recognized as themselves they are okay with recognized as being Egyptians but they don't know what is Egypt because for them Egypt is Hosni Mubarak or the regime they have seen throughout their life for last 20 30 or whatever time he had been uh, as the le head of the uh, government they wanted to change this perception they want to see the world themselves they want to have an open society where they have access to information they can share their ideas and their uh, uh, their uh, their views with each other they can debate they can talk they can criticize they have a freedom basically and that was non-existence uh, non-existing in their light and life and that is what they are trying to do or achieve through this so the protests of January were an attempt by Egyptian masses or people to express to express their anger to express their frustration to express themselves that they exist and that's why I think they were unique and they were genuine and they had some sort of um, uh, originality in them. Now I think that is more political and it is clearly driven by Muslim Brotherhood because I was reading a tweet uh, by Paul Donaher, the BBC uh, bureau chief. He was talking to a youth who belonged to Muslim Brotherhood and he was saying that they could not say so in January because they are from that they are from Muslim Brotherhood because they fear they feared that um, the point the the, the government or uh, maybe United States or other countries who are supporting them now or the movement now would point their guns towards Muslim Brotherhood and they might not achieve their uh, goals then but I think um, they knew and we also know that uh, the governments who were supporting uh, anti um, Hosni Mubarak uh, stance knew that Muslim Brotherhood had a role in that because there is no other organized political or semi-political or religio-political party in Egypt that could do that. It's easy, it's not easy to get people out of home but the most difficult job is to keep them, the keep, to keep the pressure and that pressure, the, com the, momentum, the momentum and the continuous uh, reinforcement was basically coming from Muslim Brotherhood, not directly from the political um, uh, side of Muslim Brotherhood, but its leadership. Because, for example, if in a neighborhood you are a, you are a member of Muslim Brotherhood, which often uh, has a strong presence in the middle class, lower middle class, and poor uh, suburban areas or main areas of uh, Cairo and other big cities, you will realize uh, you would like to take your neighbors or your neighbors will follow suit so it is like uh, following each other's steps and that's how basically this whole crowd gathering and these old people came onto the streets um, on the Tahrir Square I spent some time I think initially there was quite a lot of um, uh, fear but once they basically uh, got rid of the right police the military came in and there was quite a happiness and uh, with the announcement from the military that they are not going to do anything with the uh, with the protesters they were like cheering crowds people hugging military men and supporting each other and now military opening fire um, on the protesters uh, it's quite a, 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 um, 
an expected thing for me. Basically, I saw that in those days, military was just trying to counter the image of Hosni Mubarak. They were trying to create that 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 gulf between themselves and Hosni Mubarak, so that if Hosni Mubarak leaves, they are accepted. Because if they are not accepted, uh, and they are thought as a, a, a continuation of uh, Hosni Mubarak, that would be a big problem. And I think that's why they did that. And that uh, actions uh, or that uh, step of not firing or confronting the um, the protesters in January paid off, and the military had this much time to basically put its feet on the ground and understand and take control of the the government. Now I think it is very it is very difficult. Um, I would not use the word revolution for Egypt because it is still going through some initial phases of what we call revolution because now there are two clear divide uh, divisions among uh, protesters people who follow or who support Muslim Brotherhood or political parties that are uh, pro-Islamist uh, rule in Egypt and there is a clear number of uh, people who support secular Egypt uh, and they want to have uh, the continuation of secular rules um, left by Hosni Mubarak without the dictatorship, with a democratic process. And I think um, time will solve this problem. It is not going to be solved through ballot or through other things because revolution has to come from individuals, individuals who are trying to sort this out for themselves. Um, maybe in the beginning Islamists would take control or win government seats and if they would give in, in um, if they would take control of the government, they would have definitely the support of military, and that would not be surprising for me or many others. Um, in 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 general, or uh, if I say so, um, finally, um, that a lot of people draw resemblance from Egypt and uh, the way it has taken place, the way it has. Um, the way events have uh, taken place in Egypt to Pakistan. I think we are a completely different society. I think those people who do that, including Imran Khan and uh, um, a lot of others, they don't have any understanding of what is happening in Egypt and they don't have any understanding of what uh, Pakistani people are. I think we have uh, the potential of changing ourselves, uh, ourselves without uh, coming onto the streets and making this much noise and um, creating such a uh, a scene if I say so um, but what I would like to emphasize is that any revolution without the individual changing itself and uh, without the urge in an individual to change itself for the betterment of society uh, is not going to work that has failed in the past that has failed in Egypt that has failed in Tunisia uh, that has that is going to fail in Libya and if people are trying to say that this is going to work in Syria or other countries no people have to find their, gro their, their ground and they have to find the place to put their feet on the ground and then that will they will basically change otherwise these sort of uprisings will happen there will be opportunists who will come and take control or steal these revolutions and they will try to manipulate the uh, the wishes or true wishes of people with their political ideologies and at the end after five or ten years people will be back to square one as it is happening in Egypt after 30 40 years as it, as it is happening in Libya after 40 years the cycle will continue until the real change which is uh, the real change uh, in the individual is going to come and I think that's what Pakistan needs we don't need leaders uh, we don't need revolutionaries we need humans who act like humans who work for the betterment of the society but by making themselves better first uh, that's all. I would be hopefully talking to you again on a different topic or maybe on the same topic. I don't know. Uh, but inshallah, we will stay in touch. Thank you for listening to me and goodbye.